Hi guys, I'm Drake York. Welcome to this edition of Dirt Talk with Drake York, and I'm here with outlaw car driver Tanner Pettit. It's good to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Today's show will be presented by Tommy Herses Vintage Race Cars, Kevin Shera Designs, Shad Trucking, and Kimball Midwest. And this guy drives the number 24P250 car out at Cycling Speedway and at Red Bluff. So Tanner, how did you get started in this wild, wild sport of racing? Actually, I saw my dad racing my wingless out at Silver Dollar Speedway, and I told my dad, hey, I want to race something like that, and he actually got me into outlaw kart racing in the beginner box stocks when I was about six years old at Red Bluff. While your parents, Jimmy and Ann, how supportive are they of your racing? Huge. I would have been, I would not have done anything without them. I mean, my dad sets up the car every week, cleans it every week, does everything. My mom's paying for a ton. My mom and my aunt are actually always cheering me on in the grandstands, which is really nice. Racers are known for having no fear. Does that apply for you? I mean, there's a couple times when I've been scared in the car when, I mean, I've been on the wall and oncoming traffic when you're faced the wrong way. It's a little bit scary but otherwise you don't really notice it when you're going 70 miles an hour down the back straightaway and the front straightaway. What tracks have you raced at? Actually just cycling and Red Bluff. Me and my dad were trying to get to Lakeport when we had a break at Red Bluff but we just didn't get there. Well we see a lot of these guys in making up that long trip to Atlanta, uh, excuse me Montana you were talking about that. Why not try to do a little bit of cross country in there? My dad, I mean, it's just too far and too much money to haul the trailer all the way down to Montana. and I just don't think it's worth the money to go all the way down there. Do you have a nickname by any chance? Um, No, not really. We were thinking about a couple, but it just never really got. Do you think you get a jump start in your career because of outlaw carts? Oh, totally. I mean, that helps a ton. I mean, when you just jump into a wingless or a sprint cart or something, you don't have any experience before that. I mean, especially with outlaw carts, it's a lot like wingless and sprint cars, it looks like. Well, me and you both growing up in the sport at the same time, what direction do you think this sport is heading? Um, it's definitely getting bigger to speed sport, math, TV, fast form media. I mean, it's going to be on live TV someday. You started 250 this season. How has that been going for you? Um, I saw you run at Cycleland a lot, and you ran most of the season at Red Bluff. So how's that been going? Um, we had a couple races that we had a bad luck, but otherwise the season's been really good. Um, a lot of mistakes on my part, but otherwise, it's been really good. I've had a really good car, and yeah. Well, what's the difference between a box, uh, a box stock and a 250 machine? The main difference is, actually, you don't notice anything in speed but it's setting the car. A box stock, you just drive it around the corner and you turn left only. A 250, you have to actually turn left, set the car, turn it right, and get off the corner well. Well, I know for a fact you love to play basketball. Is that what you like to do other than racing? Yes, definitely. Well, what what about basketball that makes you like to do that? What? What about it makes you like it as a second favorite sport, I should say? I mean, just football is, I just haven't had a big passion for it. Basketball, I mean, I saw it on TV one day when I was like six years old, and I said, ooh, that looks like fun, and I tried it, and I've gotten much better at it now, and it seems to be fun. How many wins have you got? I remember just a couple of years ago you got, I want to say, two at Cycling, but how many have you won total? I have won four races total, and actually all in the box stock class. My first two were actually two in a row at Cycling Speedway. It was the first and second points race of the season, and I gotta say it was really nice. But my other two wins were Yamaha Petrol Trophy Night at Red Bluff, and just another points race at Red Bluff. 
I know from talking to you, you go on and on about uh, that Yamaha night win at Red Bluff. Do you consider that your biggest win? Yes and no, because that was a huge trophy, and I loved to have that. I was dreaming of it right nights before the race, and I actually really got it. But I gotta say, the race that I was most excited about was my first win at Cycling Speedway, because all of a sudden, I mean, I wasn't doing too well at the the year previous year. So when I got there and I won that race, that was huge for me. What's your best memory at the racetrack growing up or now? Um, I gotta say it's actually Yamaha Perpetual Trophy Night. It's still, it was a fun track, it was a fun race. I got some luck, but it was pretty nice to have that. Well, some fans may not remember that, so can you take us back to that night? What made it so magical for you? Um, I started deep in the field because I messed up on qualifying. But anyway, I started, I made up a couple positions, got up to fourth, and me and a couple other guys were battling it out for quite a while. Carson Perkins was in the league, gone, and he caught a big mistake because another guy was stopped in the middle of the corner and it hurt Perkins and got him a flat right front and on restart I started third on the outside because the California restart and when, when we went in the corner the two guys on the inside got together and went around the outside of them and went around them on the final lap and got the win. What do you, where do you see yourself around say 15, 18, 20 years from now? Do you see yourself being a uh, local sprint car driver, NASCAR driver, world at Outlaws driver? I see myself being a local sprint car driver because NASCAR 43 drivers in the world. It's actually 40 now. 40 now. So 40 drivers in the world get to race in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Well, that's going to wrap up our show today. Thank you, Tanner. Really appreciate it for you coming down. Today's show is presented by Roberto Marquez, attorney at law, Pappenhausen Automotive, Smith Racing, and Pedersen's Motor Sports.